it was a busy, bustling day on the island of Sodor. All over the island, steam engines and diesel engines were happily working together. Sir Toppin Hack came to see Thomas. The quarry has an important order to fill, says Sir Toppin Hack. I need an engine that is both useful and reliable. I won't let you down, sir," whistled Thomas proudly. But when Thomas arrived at the quarry, he had a nasty surprise. "Oh, it's you, oil diesel! What are you doing here?" "I'm here to help Mavis," puffed Thomas proudly. "Steam engines can't help, not like a diesel." "That's not true," said Thomas crossly. And he began working at once. But Diesel was soon up to his old tricks. First, he shunted Thomas under the hopper. Oh, cinders and ashes! Spluttered Thomas. When Thomas let off steam, Diesel sniffed wildly. "What's that horrible smell?" he cried. "Oh." It's just a stinky old steam engine. How rude! Exclaimed Thomas. Hmm. No wonder Sir Toppin had us thinking of scrapping steam engines. I don't believe you, huffed Thomas. But he was upset. That night, Thomas stayed at the quarry. But he couldn't sleep. What if Diesel was right? Thought Thomas sadly. What if Sir Toppin had scraps all of us? Thomas was worried. The next day, Toby had arrived with the quarry workers. Morning, everyone. Fresh diesel from the mainland. After he had been refueled, Diesel's engine started to go faster and faster. Ha ha! He chuckled. This new fuel makes my axles tingle. Coal doesn't make my axles tingle," sighed Thomas. "I wish I could have fresh fuel." Even Mavis was excited about the new fuel. "Oh my!" she said. Thomas felt left out. Soon, Diesel was showing off. "I'm the fastest diesel in the world," he boasted. Look at me go! Suddenly, Diesel's engine coughed. Then it started to splutter. Black smelly smoke billowed from his exhaust. Oh, <coughs> I feel sick! Wailed Diesel. Mavis started to billow smoke too. So do I! She groaned. The quarry manager was upset. It's the new fuel! He cried. Water must have leaked into the tanks. Soon, all the other diesels have broken down. Boko, Daisy, and even Salty had ground to a halt. So Sir Toppin had called the quarry manager, and the quarry manager came to see Thomas. You are to collect clean fuel from the fuel depot. Right away, sir," whistled Thomas, and he steamed out of the quarry as fast as he could. At last, he arrived at the fuel depot. "Give me all the clean fuel you've got," Thomas cried. "This is an emergency." "We will soon have you loaded," said the workman. Thomas was soon loaded with freight cars carrying fuel drums. The fuel drums were very heavy. Thomas pushed with all his might. His pistons creaked and his wheels squeaked, but he kept on puffing. Thomas trundled all over the island with fresh fuel for everybody. 
for Salty, for Boko, and for Daisy. Thomas was feeling tired, but he still had one more delivery to make. At the quarry, all the work had stopped. Diesel was as green as a leaf. Mavis was feeling very glum. Then, they all heard a wonderful noise. It was Thomas. He steamed into the quarry with one final puff. I made it! He cried. Mavis and Diesel had all the bad fuel drained out of their engines, and all the good clean fuel poured in. Marvelous! Sighed Diesel. Thank you, Thomas. Per Mavis. Soon, the quarry was clattering with the sound of work, and finally, the important job was done. Sir Tobin had arrived on board Ari and Bert. Well done, Thomas. You have saved the day, he said. You are a real useful engine, and a credit to the railway. Thank you, sir," said Thomas proudly. And even Diesel had to admit that Thomas is a very special engine, even if he is a steam engine. It was a glorious day on the island of Sodor. Villagers, children, even Sir Top and Hat was excited. The circus was coming. The engines were thrilled. They loved the circus too. Donald loved the horses. Douglas loved the clowns. Children gathered on the bridges. They were waiting to see the circus pass by. Oliver became more and more excited. Everyone wanted to collect the circus from Burnham Docks. Sir Top and Hat came to the Little Western sheds. He had the exciting news for Oliver. Oliver, you are to collect the circus. He boomed. Oliver was very happy. Pulling the circus sounded like wonderful fun. But if there are too many freight cars for you to pull, added Sir Top and Hat, you must share the work with another engine. Donald and Douglas were pleased. Maybe they get to pull the circus after all. Oliver puffed over to Brindam Docks. Oliver steamed into the docks. Cranky was unloading the circus. Oliver was amazed. There were trailers and horse boxes, colorful costumes, coaches, and flatbeds as far as the eye could see. Oliver was so excited that his axles tingled. The acrobats and clowns climbed aboard Isabel and Dulcy. Oliver buffered up to collect the coaches. Do you want to wheel there, matey? Asked Salty cheerfully. Oliver remembered what Sir Topin had had said about sharing the work, but the band started playing, and everybody was cheering. Oliver thought this was the most wonderful special delivery ever. Even though the train was very heavy, he didn't want to share it. No, thank you, Salty," he gasped. "I could do it on my own." And Oliver took the biggest puff he could, and slowly pulled away. Oliver trundled through the countryside. His pistons pumped, and his traction rods rattled. But Oliver didn't notice. He was having far too much fun. Oliver puffed towards Wellsford Station. He had a wonderful surprise. Passengers and staff waved and cheered as he passed by. The band played on, and Oliver blew his whistle in time with the trumpet. Oliver felt very special. 
pulling the circus was lots of fun. Oliver stopped by a bridge. Donald was waiting there too. Children waved to Oliver and the circus. Oliver blew his whistle. Donald wanted to join in. Is there anything I can take? asked Donald hopefully. But Oliver wanted to keep all the fun to himself. No, thank you, he gasped. I can do it all on my own. Donald watched Oliver and the circus slowly chuff away. He felt very disappointed. Oliver puffed on. The train started to feel heavier and heavier. His traction rods were rattling more than ever. Oliver stopped at the junction. Douglas was waiting in the siding. Douglas thought the band sounded very jolly. If you want to uncouple some freight cars, he said hopefully, I could take them for you. No, thank you, gaps Oliver. I can do it all on my own. He didn't want to miss out on any of the fun. Oliver steamed on, but every huff and every chuff got harder and harder. Oliver passed through the next station, but he was almost out of puff. Oliver wasn't having fun anymore. Then there was trouble. With a horrible creak and a terrible crack, Oliver's traction rods broke. Oliver stopped with a jolt. Suddenly, it was very quiet. Oliver felt very sad. Oliver's driver telephoned for help. Even the performers practicing in the field didn't make Oliver feel better. Oliver wished he had shared the heavy load. Soon, Donald and Douglas arrived. Douglas brought new traction rods, and Donald brought hay for the horses. But Oliver still felt miserable. I wish I'd shared the work with you, he said sadly. Don't worry. Of Donald, we can all have fun now," said Douglas cheerfully, and he was right. While Oliver's tracks and rods were replaced, they all enjoyed watching the circus performers practice. Then Oliver shared the freight cars. Donald took the horses. Douglas took the performers. Then the band started playing. This is fun," puffed Oliver. All three engines blew their whistles, and the long and jolly train set off. Later, the friends watched as the big tent was put up. Thanks for helping me," puffed Oliver. "Sharing your work makes things much easier." But sharing the fun is the best fun of all, and everyone agreed. <laughs>